La diffusion vient de démarrer. Tous les participants sont en mode écoute seul. Hi everybody, um, so it's Anthony here, so I'll be your presenter today. Uh, so we'll wait a, uh, a bit, uh, just to be sure that everybody's here uh, for five minutes, I guess. Um, so uh, you can actually chat with me during the webinar in your chat box on the right. E and so if you have questions, you know, you can actually ask me that. Uh, I will actually uh, like uh, take 20, 25 minutes in the end, just to be sure to answer all your questions. So if you have some, feel free to shoot me. Uh, to, and uh, I'll try to answer all your, your questions. So, in any way. so we'll, we'll book some time at the end just to do that. And, and if you have questions during the webinar, um, you can ask them, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to actually read them because I'll present. Uh, so I will take all the questions in the end and uh, I will go from that. So uh, uh, we'll actually start in like three to four minutes now. Well, maybe I can actually say hi with this tool. Can I share my webcam for one second? Yes, I can. So for people who don't know me, I'm Anthony, and I work in the adoption team. So uh, I'll have to close that camera after that, but just to say hi. Uh, and so, so yeah, I'll have to, if you have questions, uh, you can actually ask me that at the end. So. That was nice. So uh, maybe we'll actually start now. Uh, it's two minutes after five, so let's say people will join. Um, so uh, yeah, so the, the, the webinar actually, you know, is, is called Get on Board with Sigfox, and the idea behind it was to, you know, introduce you to Sigfox and to explain you all the tools that you might need to start because starting in IoT and, and with Sigfox uh, is not something easy. So we actually made a lot of tools to make it easier, uh, but you know you have to know them. So we wanted to to start this series of webinar by one, just actually putting everything in place and explain you all the easy things to start with. So first, uh, to introduce what kind of tools do you need, I still need to introduce a bit what is Sigfox, uh, because some people of you might not know uh, still what we do completely. So Sigfox, just in few words, is a, a network and a company uh, dedicated to deploy a network made for IoT, for the Internet of Things. And so we invented a technology, a protocol, so a radio protocol, that we deploy with our own antennas uh, in top of roof buildings, etc. cetera, um, in, you know, today in 45 countries in the world with the help of our local operator. And we are operating this network. That's what Sigfox is. The most important parts of this network is these four things that you can see on the screen. Uh, this is the four pillars of Sigfox. The first one 
is that this new kind of network is very energy efficient. Uh, and this is very, really important because when you deploy your device in the, in, the, in the field, you actually can't go and change the battery every day. So the, the, net, the SIGPARC network is actually optimized to have devices which can go on the field up to 10 years of battery life with two single batteries. So it's really, really energy efficient. It's also very cost oriented, meaning actually doing a device with SIGPARC is very inexpensive. Uh, the technology is so simple. And, and it's so easy to integrate that it's uh, very, very optimized in terms of cost for the user. So, so you know, so doing a device is not expensive, but also in terms of network. So deploying a SIGFOX network is not that expensive because the technology is really simple. And because of the network is, is quite simple, the actually cost of connecting to it is really cheap as well. So it's cost optimized on both the device side and on the network subscription side. It's really, really optimized. Another big point is that it's very complementary. I mean, having something like Sigfox is completely new. It didn't exist. Uh, but you actually already have all of you today, you know, uh, uh, stuff connected with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, maybe 3G or whatsoever. And Sigfox won't replace that. We are not here to replace Wi-Fi. We are here to add another option to this kind of, you know, low, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, short range uh, uh, protocols, etc. cetera. Sigfox has a new layer. But it's very complementary. You can add today, you have a lot of devices with Sigfox, which are Bluetooth and Sigfox at the same time. Bluetooth when you are at home and you're connected to your phone, and it actually goes to Sigfox when you are outside. So this is really, really complementary to every technology that exists today. And the most important point for me is that this technology is very, very simple. And for everybody, it's simple for our ecosystem, our device makers, people doing our device with it. Uh, the technology itself is very simple to, to understand, to integrate into a device. A couple of line of codes, actually, uh, codes are uh, enough to send a message. And it's also, it's also very, very easy to use for the end user. Because instead of Wi-Fi, where you have to connect to a, uh, like a network, etc., with Sigfox, just place a device somewhere, and it magically works, and it connects to the, to the network. So it's actually really, really important when you want to deploy thousands or millions of devices that this network is very, very simple. Today, you can't connect millions of devices with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because it's really complex to connect. With Sigfox, it's made to be simple. So you can actually easily connect this kind of devices. So how does it work? So it's really, again, this is really simple. So first thing to understand is that for Sigfox, you need devices which are talking. So as we talk about the Internet of Things, you need things. And these things are represented by a device. So it can be, you know, like a, a weather station. It can be a parking sensor. It can be a, like a temperature sensor in your, in your window or whatsoever. So it's a lot of different kind of devices which are emitting a Sigfox message. This message is actually then picked by our antennas, what is represented here by the Sigfox network. So our antennas are, you know, on top of roofs, buildings, etc. We create a kind of public network, kind of really similar to what the mobile network is, but you know, very, very optimized. Um, and so when this message is picked by our antennas, it's sent to the Sigfox backend. Once it's on the backend, we push that to your customer backend. And so it's that simple. The device sends a message, it's picked up by our antennas, pushed to our own cloud, and once processed, we push that to your own cloud so it's very very simple this whole process takes between you know like two seconds to six seconds approximately so it's really really fast as well um, it's, it's kind of optimized and uh, so just for you to understand as well is that this kind of uh, you know if you, if you talk about Sigfox solution people always think that you know it's just the device but actually a solution so like a, you know to use Sigfox you don't need just the device of course, the device is here to generate data. So this is kind of the most important piece you know, of, this, of this chain. But then you need the connectivity to transfer it to your cloud. And then you need the platform to visualize and understand the data. So it's really important for you to understand that, that if you want to do and use Sigfox as a customer, you don't only need just the sensor, but you also need the platform for it. And this is really important to actually get it. And a device alone is not a solution. Uh, you need a lot of stuff on top of it to make it solution. 
So as you might understand, there is actually a lot of different ways to use Sigfox because every company is different, and so you can actually use it different paths to use Sigfox. The main, let's say, uh, people how people use Sigfox in the normal way is that they actually buy and they to end solution so we are customers so they actually go to one of our partners developing solution and they buy the whole package you know with the device the platform the connectivity etc uh, and so they just use it as a customer they don't even have to see Sigfox behind they just see the data in their you know in their web in their website they see the device on their trackers or whatsoever but then they don't have anything to do they just put the device see the data and everything is done so that's the way that's the most used way let's say but then there is also a way if you want to create this kind of solution. So one way is actually to buy a device. Uh, so like, you know, like a, a wide branded device because a lot of them are available on, uh, you know, from OEMs, etc. You can buy a device and build your own platform. If you have a vertical knowledge on your use case, if you do trackers, like if you do, let's say logistics, supply chain, whatsoever, you know what you do. Uh, if you are a software company, then you can take a device from somebody else and integrate that to your platform with Sigfox. That's a way. Another way is more if you are like a hardware company, you can build your own device and integrate that to an existing platform uh, which are available on the market. So if you're more like a hardware company, this is might be the, you know, the path that you want to go. You develop your own device with Sigfox, develop your own stuff, and, and that plug that to an existing platform like IBM or whatsoever. We'll see that a bit later. And then there's actually the most complex way is actually you want to build your device and you want to build your platform as well. Uh, so this is for really people who need to focus on the vertical market, et cetera, and people who want to go for volumes, et cetera. So people who have hardware skills, software skills, this is very, very kind of, you know, you need to be really complementary to develop your whole thing on your own. And as I write, you know, each option there has a very different level of complexity. All of this depends on your needed volumes. So the first first option is, you know, as a customer, as I said again, uh, the easiest and the quickest path uh, to use Sigfox is actually to buy an end-to-end -end solution which is already deployed and developed by our partners. So uh, you can actually go, uh, so, uh, just I will I'll send, show you the, the link later, but there is a lot of uh, companies deploying Sigfox solution right now, from trackers to weather station to agriculture monitoring to security solution. I mean, there is a lot out there that you can already, you know, contact, put the, uh, put the sensors and see the data and it just works. So this is very, very easy to go. And it's, I think, the quickest way to go to, uh, to AI uh, because you can prove the value very, very easily. And, uh, and one, of, you know, one of the examples we have is the Sunset, of course, which is a the Sigfox marketing uh, device. Uh, if you go on sunset.io, um, you can actually buy the device but it also comes preloaded with the connectivity and with the platform. Um, so this is, you know, you buy the whole solution. Another example is what we call the Orbit Free from a company called Sensor High. This is a, you know, temperature humidity sensor, uh, and it actually comes with the platform as well. Uh, so, and of course, it's on not only two of them. There is actually dozens of them. So if you want to see all of them, you can go on our partner network. So I need to, I'll, I'll show you my whole screen behind that. So if you go on our partner network and you select products and solutions, by the way, all the links I'm going to show you here uh, will be available after that. So no worries, you're gonna get all the links. Don't, don't try to copy paste them. They are all available, no worries. Uh, so here, if you go on our partner network, you will see every single solution which is available from our partners. So, uh, you know, from, uh, from um, trailer, uh, tracker, uh, to monitoring air quality, to monitoring temperature, humidity, uh, you know, all kind of really vertical platform and, and solution are actually here. So RedSense is the rodent monitoring company, Loka is a tracker, etc. So again, if you need, uh, if you need something and that you, you, you need like for, 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 your, for your company, maybe there is something already there out there which is already done. So you can go there and, and look for it. But just to go back to my presentation. Um, so this is, you know, again, the easiest way to use Sigfox actually today is to go out there and to buy a solution which is already developed. It will go, it will go really, really fast. And what, what the only thing you need is the, you know, the sensor, the platform, etc. It's very simple. 
So another way to do Sigfox, which is a bit uh, more complex, is actually to build your own solution. Uh, so this is uh, very, very different. And in order to do that, because it requires more knowledge, we actually set up a lot of tools for it. The first that you need to actually know is uh, what we call build.sigfox.com. Build so build is a very interesting website for people who want to build something with Sigfox. Uh, we actually put, put there all the resources you need to learn about Sigfox, understand how it, what it takes to do a device, understand what it takes to connect your platform, etc. cetera, what, what certification you need, uh, what kind of connector for your backend you need, et cetera. Um, so to learn about Sigfox, uh, if you want to do your own solution, you just need to go and build. And we are improving uh, the content every time. So if you have any request or any idea, feel free to send us remarks. Uh, but our goal is really to make all the content we can actually out there. We, we actually even put open hardware and open you know, antenna design, etc., for freeware as well. So if you want to just retake what was done, uh, we actually try to give everything there for free. So that's, that's one really, really good thing about Sigfox build. Then if you, if you learn about Sigfox, then you might want to be able to test it. Uh, and of course, you know, you don't, you're not going to believe me by my word uh, as a good engineer or as a pragmatic guy. So you want to try it. And if you want to try Sigfox, uh, the easiest way is to go through dev kits, so development kits or evaluation kits. Uh, so these actually kits are small, you know, boards which are made to actually connect to the Sigfox network in a couple of minutes. These, these are like, you know, the Arduino of this world, the PyCon, et cetera. So you, here you have a list dedicated through and in, uh, by uh, radio configuration. Uh, but then if you want to try Sigfox and do your first step, you can buy a dev kit from these uh, providers. And which is really cool is that they come, you know, preloaded pre with connectivity. So you don't need to buy Sigfox connectivity. It's actually embedded directly in the dev kit. And you can automatically register to our backend in a few minutes. So you can literally try the Sigfox network in, let's say, less than 30 minutes if you have one of these boards. And if you don't have it, buy them, and in two days they're at home. So uh, again, you will get links, but here is, let's say, a, a quick list about which one are the most used, let's say. And if you need more, uh, again, you can, you can go on the partner network, and there will be way, way more solutions uh, on, the, on the dev kit side. Uh, if you need, for example, uh, you know, an evaluation kit from STMicro, an evaluation kit from Wisel, uh, you know, we have a lot of different uh, solution uh, to actually use as a dev kit. Uh, you can see here it's a GPS module with Sigfox embedded, so you have all every antenna, etc. needed. So just to try the GPS tracker, here is an Atmel micro, uh, Atmel dev kit, Raspberry Raspberry Pi expansion board. If you want to try Sigfox with Raspberry Pi, so again, we have a lot of different of dev kits just to use. Uh, and again, the good thing is that all of them come come with uh, connectivity preloaded. So everywhere you are, you can just try it easily. So that's, that's for the testing part. Um, and to be honest, everybody actually tried with a dev kit. So, so don't feel ashamed to start with that. We all did. So now you tried Sigfox. Uh, you're convinced it works. Of course it does. You actually want to do your device. And you want to get a device to put, you do like, you know, sensors, but you want to track your temperature in your, in your field or your temperature in your in your warehouse whatsoever. So now comes the question of the device. So actually the main question that you have to ask yourself is, do I need to actually make it by myself? Because you know people believe that it's actually very easy to do hardware, but it's not. It's, uh, it's, it is possible, but it's actually kind of a hard job. So maybe the, the good solution is actually to buy one. Uh, because a lot of our partners, device makers uh, and ecosystem partners, actually developed white labeled devices, which are very, very easy to buy, uh, and that you can integrate to your own platform. So, you know, you, what you can do is before to actually launch yourself in, in, a, in a new development of devices, you can actually, again, go on our partner network and look for a sensor that might, that might be already developed. So here I was looking for a temperature sensor. And again, you can see that a lot of them are actually available uh, and that you can buy from them. So uh, you can, you know, there is a lot of different kind of solutions from different kind of partners, one with external antennas like the EDIAG, 
uh, one with internal antennas uh, like NKE, for example. Uh, and again, we have the Unbox, which is from a French company called Green Citizen. Uh, so you have very, very different kind of, of device that you can actually buy and implement yourself. So that's, you know, you can look on the partner network for that. Uh, it might be a better solution than developing the hardware by yourself at the beginning. Uh, they, you know, it's way, way faster to go into market. Uh, it might be cheaper as well. So again, it's, it's a really good solution. But then if you, if you actually think that there is no device available on the market and you need to, to, to build yourself, uh, then you need to be prepared for it. Uh, so of course, if you do a device by yourself, it's actually kind of cheaper for big volumes. Uh, it can match your use case again more precisely because you define the, actually the needs of it. Um, and so that's you know that might be a good option. And again, as you if you want actually develop your own device, you can go on build. So there's a website that we, we developed about the you know to learn about Sigfox, and there you will actually learn how to actually do a device. So we have a, a development section which will tell you what kind of question you need to ask yourself when developing a device. So first question you will actually ask yourself is which kind of hardware do you need in your device? So you know how to use the Sigfox radio. So maybe with a module, with a reference design, with a transceiver, you know, what kind of battery do you need inside? Uh, what kind of, you know, how to test in production, credentials, etc. We even have, you know, antennas advice so if you want to develop your own antennas or buy antennas from the shelves uh, so everything is actually on build uh, to, to actually try to do your, your device so, so we have a lot of information we even have application of ST micro for antennas etc so again if you want to develop your own device you can go and build and you will find not all information but a lot of information to develop your own device so after again you know if you remember doing the sigfox solution is actually the device the connectivity and the platform to visualize and process the data the question that you actually ask yourself for the device you can ask yourself it actually for the platform as well um, do you want to buy or make the platform that you will visualize the data on uh, and it's a very good question to ask because uh, you have a lot of partners which are out there uh, like the things that IO or even people like IBM, Amazon, uh, Waylay, uh, and, and we'll see a lot of others, which are actually developing platform just made for it, and which might, which would might you know uh, suit your needs. So again, uh, before to redevelop a complete platform from scratch, which can be very expensive in you know software and skills, etc., you can go on there and look if you have a platform which is dedicated. Uh, so this is really really important. So. Uh, you know, you have universal uh, platforms. You might have people specialists in logistics. You might have people uh, in, you know, in cold chain monitoring. You know, again, a lot of different kind of platforms which might need what you need. So you need to assess all of this just to be sure you don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, this way, you actually will be able to go faster in the market, which is the most important way. Of course, if you don't find something which actually is good for you, uh, you can create it yourself. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, connecting with Sigfox is actually kind of easy, uh, so it's quite simple to do. Uh, and and uh, you will be able to, let's say, modify it more than if you buy something already done. And uh, so if you decide to do your own platform, uh, this is just to tell you, uh, again, as I said, it was, it's actually kind of easy. Um, and you have two ways of actually doing that, to connect our Sigfox cloud to the, your own cloud through the APIs, and you will find the documentation here, uh, just the link, uh, and, and through callbacks, which are another way of getting data out of our platform. And again, I've actually put the links just to be sure you have the documentation. So with that, you'll be able to connect your platform and get the data out uh, of the Sigfox platform and actually set up your own visualization platform. So now the next step is, uh, you know, you have your device, you have a platform, but you actually need your device to send message on the Sigfox network and to go to your, to your platform. So what do you need for that is connectivity. Uh, what I didn't say before is that our business model is, based on, is actually based on selling connectivity to our customers to connect their device to our network. This, this business model is, is, you know, this device is actually per year per device, so as kind of a phone, but for a phone you pay every month, 
for a Sigfox device, you will pay every year to your, to your Sigfox operator to connect to its network. The good thing is that for, you know, if you want to start and if you want to develop, like, let's say, 10 prototypes, uh, is that we developed a website for it uh, because, you know, uh, to make it completely automated, I will show you. We developed something called buy.sigfox.com. So this is a platform where you'll be able to, to, to actually buy connectivity and to connect your first device for it automatically. So, uh, you know, if you, you go on, on buy, you'll be able to actually buy Sigfox connectivity uh, directly from there. So, you know, for example, if you're from Germany, you can select your operator, then you can select your connectivity pack. Let's say I want to connect 10 devices or 100 devices. Uh, you know, you, you'll be able to go directly with, with buy.sigfox.com. Of course, if, you, if you're an enterprise and you want to connect more than 1,000 devices, uh, you have to connect, you have to contact your operator, your Sigfox operator. Because, you know, this platform is not really made for big volumes. This is really made to make people completely, you know, autonomous in the way they actually connect their first devices. So it's, uh, it's very, really important to understand that. Uh, people who actually buy 10,000 devices don't go through, through this uh, platform. And another thing to understand is that the pricing is not the one that you will get for high volumes. The pricing that you will see here is really expensive. And there is a reason for that is that this the connectivity type you will get is uh, the platinum one with every option, etc. Uh, and there is a lot of useless stuff that you might not need for your own uh, stuff. So uh, here for 10 and, and 100, we put everything just for you to be safe. It's for testing. But then if you want to go in production and connect thousands of them, the price will be very, very different from what you see here. So I really strongly advise you to contact your Sigfox operator to know more about the Sigfox price. Uh, if you plan the business plan or whatsoever, it will be uh, way, way more accurate than just taking these examples. So this is for buy. And, and just for you to know, once you actually buy your, connect, your first connectivity on this website, uh, you will receive like a contract and you will automatically be able to put your, you know, your 10 or your 100 first device directly on the Sigfox backend completely autonomously. And you will start to see the data flowing to your own platform. So that's, that's what it is buy. Whoop. Um, so just go back to presentation. Um, yep. One, one I, I didn't show it to you, but actually I can maybe made a, a first here is that we just actually launched uh, the, a new Activate platform. So for the ones who know already what Activate is, it was it's actually a way to activate your dev kits. It was the one I mentioned earlier, the Arduino, PyCom, etc. Once you receive it, you have a you need to activate it on our platform to get a Sigfox backend account, etc. Then, you know, buy.sigfox.com is also the good page now from today to activate your dev kits. So you just have to click on activate. You can select your country. Let's say you come again from Germany. Next. You have to put your Sigfox ID, your secret pack code, explain what you do, etc. And then you're set. Automatically, all the, device, the data coming from your device will actually go to, your, to the Sigfox backend and you'll be able to see everything. And this is completely automatic. It will create you an account on the Sigfox backend, etc. So you don't need to contact Sigfox uh, completely. So this is, this is nice. And I, it was actually launched today. So consider yourself lucky. You were the first ones to see it live. So um, yeah, go back to the presentation. Um, sorry for that. Um, so the Sigfox Partner Network. Um, until now, you know, in the presentation, I actually showed you a lot uh, of the Sigfox Partner Network. It's actually because it's really important in our ecosystem. Uh, in the on this partner network, you'll be able to find a lot of information, of useful information, uh, if you want to develop a Sigfox-based solution, uh, and really, really different kind of information. So, for example, if you want to select your, you know, semiconductor, uh, like uh, you know, modules, etc. You will find uh, the, the you will find it on the partner network. So uh, you can see here that uh, if I select chip makers on the partner network, it will actually tell me you know take me to people like ST Microelectronics, uh, NXP, Microchip, OnSemi, uh, Texas, etc., which are all providers of Sigfox semiconductor solution. And if you click, for example, on OnSemi conductor, uh, which does uh, you know semiconductor for Sigfox. You will actually, oh no, it's clicked on microchip, sorry. 
my Wi-Fi is not really, really good today. So I'm gonna be a bit slower for once. So yeah, if you click on on semi, you will see their page, etc. All the products that they are developing for Sigfox, so all their uh, you know solutions. So this is the you know the on semi conceive uh, solution for Sigfox, and then you can also contact them. So if you need a contact at Onsemi because you want to try this kind of solution, you can contact them, and they will actually receive the an email and answer to it. So this is really really useful. So again, you know the partner network is a really really useful tool if you want to develop solutions because you can actually look and compare what kind of solution you need. So for for semiconductor, uh, for modules as well. Um, but again, as we showed earlier, you can also find you know device makers, solution makers, etc. Uh, there, so you can also compare kind of different types of device. Uh, are they available, etc.? So uh, if you, for example, looking for device makers again, if we go on the partner network, you'll be able to find actually what you need. So feel free to spend a lot of time on the partner on the partner network. I actually do uh, because it's very very interesting. Uh, you will you will find a lot of different uh, you know, kind of companies. If you're looking, for example, for a GPS tracker. You can actually just search for GPS. Oh. And then automatically it will actually tell you all the GPS trackers that are on the partner network. And then you'll be able to you know, compare each other and contact the, the device makers, etc. So hey, hi. I didn't think which is our, one of our French partners. So this is, uh, you know, uh, what kind of use you can have for the partner network. And again, uh, everything is listed there. So feel free to spend a lot of time on it. Oh, that needs to go away. So um, this was for selecting your solution, etc. Uh, but then uh, maybe you need to contact us, or maybe you need to get some support out of Sigfox or contact the community. We actually develop a lot of different solutions to 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 help you. Uh, so and with with different kind of needs you have. So if you have a question regarding the Sigfox technology and you don't know where to ask it, you can actually ask it on ask.sigfox.com. Uh, so if you go if you go on there, what you will see is actually people asking technical questions about the Sigfox technology. Uh, you know how to register to support, etc. I mean a lot of different technical questions that we from Sigfox monitor and we try to answer as soon as possible. So even if you don't have, let's say, uh, you know, regular support Sigfox account, you can register on ask.sigfox.com, ask your question, and somebody from Sigfox will still answer it. So ask.sigfox.com is a very, very important resource for anybody working with Sigfox who has really, really simple questions. A second useful link that you could actually get is uh, our Slack community. So what we built uh, more than I think 18, 18 months ago is that we had a lot of people who wanted to chat just about Sigfox to say random things or to say really technical things. Um, so we actually created a Slack community, which is you know an, an instant messenger community, and and everybody is actually you know free to join. So what you just have to do is go on sigfoxbuilders.ebrokuapp.com. Uh, again, you don't need to take the because all the links will actually be sent and then you can put your email and you will get invited to this uh, to this community so uh, there is a lot of technical questions uh, you will actually be able to connect to people from Sigfox you'll be able to connect to influencers ambassadors etc so uh, you know the slack community is really really interesting uh, feel free to join me if you want to and then the 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 more important links of all uh, of all three is actually our support because of course as every company who has a service which has a service we have a live support uh, you know handed by people from uh, Sigfox that you can actually you know uh, contact if you have any let's say special request uh, let's say that you have a problem with one of your device you can have one problem with one of your backend account you have a generic problem with Sigfox which you can't really solve then you can go on support.sigfox.com you will create an account, and then our engineers will will refer to that with uh, you know uh, a dedicated amount of time, etc. So this is our let's say regular support account that you you can actually get. 
uh, and this is support.sigfox.com. Um, by the way, just on, on support.sigfox.com, there is a very, very nice feature that uh, actually we made a, a search bar. So if you have a question about, for example, the Sigfox callback, we implemented really a really nice search feature that it will actually search in every resource we have at Sigfox to match the question. So let's say you're regarding callback uh, here. Oh. I need to authorize that. It will actually, so you know, I think this question will actually send me to resource center. So I, every you know, we have a lot of documentation as well. So this is really, really useful. So you might actually, you know, save that URL as well because you'll be able to find a lot of your questions here and your answers here. So uh, if you download that API, for example, uh, you have a lot of questions about the API, etc. So again, uh, the support of TikTok.com is very, very, very useful to everybody. And the last part, sorry, I'm, I'm talking way too much. Um, so the last slide is, is about, you know, uh, the network coverage, because what you want to actually do if, if you develop a device is, uh, you know, try your device. And there is different ways of doing that with the real coverage. So, of course, the best is actually to have public coverage with Sigfox. Uh, again, as I said, Sigfox network is, you know, antennas, which are on roofs, high points, etc. So there is a dedicated coverage for it, like you would have with a mobile phone. And we actually have a coverage map. So the first thing to check if you have coverage is to check on the map. It's really easy because our coverage is public. So you just go on our website and just go for it. So there is sigfox.com slash coverage. And then you can see uh, our coverage. So the blue part is our coverage. And the purple part are, is the coverage that you still need to install. So for example, if you look for you know Germany, uh, we are quite advanced, but there is still some holes that we will find we will fill before the end of the year. Uh, France, Spain, Italy, etc., are really well covered. Uh, usually, the area that you see in purple are mountain area, uh, so which are not really populated. So it's quite useless to put a network there. Um, so you know this is a the tool that you can use to know if your coverage is is, uh, is this website. Uh, so just to show you a bit around the world, because we are quite proud about our coverage now. So if you look to Mexico, for example, Brazil, South Africa is quite impressive as well. And New Zealand just completed their, their network uh, uh, today, uh, and because it cover most of the populated area. And Japan, again, is going really, really fast as well. So the sigfox.com slash coverage is really, really useful just to know if you have coverage. But then, uh, uh, if you don't have coverage uh, and you still want to develop a Sigfox solution, because may, you might be in a, in a country where we haven't deployed yet, we don't have, we haven't uh, an operator yet. So you want to check the SDR dongle. So the SDR dongle is actually a really nice tool to start with Sigfox. Uh, this is a USB key, USB stick that you plug to your laptop and which will emulate the, uh, uh, the Sigfox network. So it's, you don't need to be connected to the public network anymore. You just need to buy this USB stick, uh, have your device next to it and connect it with the cable. And then you will actually simulate everything from the Sigfox network, which, and it will help you to start with your development, try your implementation. Uh, you know, if, if you're implementing yourself a Sigfox stack, there is an amazing tool called the RSA, the Radio Sigfox, uh, sorry, it's a radio signal analyzer where you will be able to see everything you need to optimize your implementation, etc. Um, so again, uh, the USB, USB SDR dongle is very, very, very interesting tool. Um, and I would advise to everybody actually to buy it. Even people who are already de developing uh, on Sigfox and who think who know about Sigfox, I think this kind of you know, USB stick, which is optimized for developers, is really, really interesting, uh, especially the, um, the signal analyzer part. You will be able to understand way better how the technology works, how the protocol works, see all your message, etc. So I would really, really advise everybody actually uh, working with Sigfox to, to get uh, an SDR dongle. Uh, and you can get it really easy, easily uh, at one of our partners' websites. So if you go on yadam.eu, which is a, a distributor online, uh, you can get it for 128 euros. Um, it comes uh, really, really fast in your, at, at, at your place and you'll be able to start developing in, in a couple of days. So that's really, really useful. 
Um, yeah, and I think, to be completely honest, that was it. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and look in the question if I do have some. So um, I think you can actually ask questions uh, on the right of, the, of the, the screen, as I show you. Uh, and I don't see any. So does anybody have any questions? I will see them here, normally. In the can. So maybe the tool actually doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Who's talking? Hi, Anthony. Um, I will read you the yeah. questions we have. Uh, what is the okay. plan in the US? Because in my state, we don't have Sigfox network coverage. Um, so that's a very good question in the US. So they are, they are committed to deploy way, way more this year. Uh, I, I don't know what was the public announcement about that. Uh, what was the plan for the US is really developing with the business opportunities we have. Uh, so right now, if you look at the website, uh, we have a very good coverage uh, in certain area like the B area. Uh, New York, Chicago, et cetera, Texas. Um, so it's kind of already, already quite nice. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we don't cover all the states. So what I would advise again is to buy a, a dongle just to try to develop and, and then uh, coverage might come. But I don't, don't have exact plans. So uh, if you have my email address, so it's, uh, uh, I'll send you that in private later at uh, anthony.charbonnier at sigfox.com. I'll be able to find information and, and tell you a bit more about that. Uh, uh, but to today, I don't have the exact plan uh, of, of the US. What I know is that we, we actually plan to develop, to deploy way, way more this year uh, because we have, we have customers requesting it, so we'll actually deploy uh, way more. Sorry for not answering completely your question. I, I'll try to do that in, in private with more information. The next question from Juan. Where could I find technical information about how to design antennas for Sigfox? Are there some brand or references you recommend? Oh uh, yeah, clearly, uh, and this is uh, something we've been working a lot on because uh, I didn't say it, but antenna design and antenna in general is the most critical point when you design a Sigfox device and any radio devices. So we actually focused a lot of our efforts on that, and so we we actually developed a lot of content on it. So uh, if you go to the build website, as I said a bit before, you will find a dedicated page on antennas. And uh, you will be able to download a white paper, uh, which is dedicated to antenna. So it's actually 34 pages of uh, our best our radio engineer, antenna engineer, explaining you how to do that. So uh, I actually strongly advise you to read it. Um, you know, it's uh, 34 pages, which are very, very interesting. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going really, really fast in the document here. But you can see, you, can, you will find all the basic, et cetera. So that could be a useful information. Then uh, we also released in open source the antenna from the sunset. So it could be very interesting for you just to learn about how we did uh, by downloading it, et cetera, looking at what we did. Um, so again, you can download it for free on build.cfox.com. Uh, the document is here. So you'll see the overview, uh, what we did, et cetera. Uh, so this is very interesting, the, the radiation pattern, et cetera. So this might be also interesting for you to, to learn directly from what we implement in, in, in the world. So this is, uh, this is one, one other topic, one other, let's say, content. And then uh, um, what you can, so there, then there is two options when you want to develop with an antenna. So first, uh, you might want to look at a uh, brand like Pulse, Larsen, uh, you know, SMK, uh, Tower Glass, you know, and Molex, uh, which are the, let's say, usual, Antenna designers, you know, so they have a lot of resources on stuff like Mauser, Radio Spare. If you look for 868 megahertz or you know, like 902 megahertz antenna, there is a lot of them which are available on the shelves. Uh, so like SummiWave, QuarterWave, etc. Um, or you, if you really interested, if you really want to do an optimized antenna, you might want to actually go directly to an antenna designer to do an antenna just for your design. And so uh, then you can contact all these companies, uh, which are as well on on, on build.tickfox.com slash antennas because they might actually design antenna just for you so well always wireless for example is a company which is you know they are dedicated to developing specific antenna for customers so you can contact all of these guys uh, and ask for like you know can you do an antenna for my device and they will actually answer and etc so of course you know it's 
uh, it's kind of expensive because you do your own antenna for your device, but it's really, really interesting just to look at it because again, um, the antenna is the most critical point of your device. You know, we always talk about connected objects. I mean, if the antenna is not really well made, it's an, it's an object which is not connected. So this is really, really important to, to cover it. So that's, that's what maybe my, my answer, which is quite long, sorry for that. Okay, the next question is about, is it possible that end users auto-configure their plan on, of connectivity according to different modes of use that represent different volumes of data, which have been previously defined by the solution provider? So about uh, so I don't... by website, can you choose your plan? That's the question. Ah, okay, so on by the, so I don't know if it's an insider or not, or you're really, really well informed. <laughs> but it's a very good question. Um, so today you can't choose your plan on buy.sigfox.com. So if you go there, as I explained a bit before, you will have by default the platinum plan, so which is the, the one with 140 message per day, etc. So you'll have the all-inclusive plan. Uh, we are we are planning to release in the next couple of weeks or months an update with that, uh, uh, which will allow you to choose your own plan. So you want 10, 50, 100 devices with the platinum, silver, gold, or you know a number of message that you want. Uh, we we are planning to to release that in the near future. But for today, you can actually uh, you know uh, only the 10, 10, 100, and it's only platinum. So 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 yeah, sorry for that. But that uh, yeah, but yeah, we are we are working heavily on it because we know it's a really really it's a requested by a lot of people. So we are doing our best to to solve that. Okay, the next question from William uh, from South Africa. Does SquidNet have the SDR dongle? That's a really good question. I don't know if SquidNet does, uh, but uh, for sure it's available in your country. I mean, uh, you can actually buy it from uh, DigiKey, which is available worldwide, um, and you can buy it from, from Yadom as well. So the answer is uh, I don't know, but you can still buy it. Uh, you don't need to go through your operator for it. Um, but if you you can ask, maybe actually the, the guys at SquidNet, uh, they, are, they are doing an amazing job in South Africa for their ecosystem, so maybe, maybe they might have some in stock. Uh, but I don't know if they have some uh, today. But again, if you go to, uh, uh, to, 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 see, to the SDR dongle, if you click on the Yadom link or DigiKey link, uh, it will actually go, make you go on the product page. And then uh, both of the websites ship uh, everywhere in the world. So you, you can get them from there. And it will be really, really fast. The next question is about, do you have any case studies that show advantages or disadvantages for using an existing device versus developing your own device for customers? Now, we, I mean, there is no white papers for it. but. Uh, I would actually uh, tell you about my almost three years experience at Sigfox uh, behind it. So, um, you know, doing your hardware is actually really, really hard. And, and people often underestimate the skills it requires to do, you know, PCB, antenna, and, and plastic mold, etc. <coughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, so, <coughs> sorry for that. So, you know, it's, it's always a question about uh, the volumes that you want to go as well, because uh, if you, for example, do maybe 100, like 1,000 devices, and uh, if the device costs 100,000 to, to actually create, uh, then you might actually get devices which are already off the shelf. Uh, because, of course, you are sharing the energy cost, etc. So it's actually more interesting. If you are doing 1 million devices, of course, it might be interesting to develop your own because you will get optimized costs uh, on, the, on the BUM. You will optimize the sensor, etc. So, you know, it's, you know, it's always, let's say, a trade-off between the volumes, the skills it requires, et cetera. But uh, from my understand, my experience, uh, if you don't have, you know, really hard experience in hardware, et cetera, it's way, way better to actually buy it from somebody who already do it. Uh, we have a lot of device makers who does it really, really well. So, uh, and it will go way faster. Uh, just for your knowledge, I mean, doing an hardware from scratch takes uh, a lot of time between, you know, sometimes, so we have amazing partners who do that in five months, but some some of them, which are doing more, maybe more complex products, do it in one year. So you know it's it's added time to your time to market. So again, there is no precise answer to that, uh, but uh, it's always a question about what volume you want to target, what skills do you have, 
you know what uh, price uh, like price point you have so you want to cut margins maybe from your providers i mean it's a lot of questions to ask yourself uh, but yeah of course if you do small volumes just buy from shelf and if you do huge volumes you might look at doing on, on your own uh, but then again uh, it's not an easy job so be careful with that Okay, we still have uh, five, six more questions. Let, let's try to answer them all. Uh, this one is coming from Alaeldin. Yeah. Um, you are asking about the startup program. I want to work as an outsourcing layout design company. I did not start the company yet. How can Sigfox help me to start the company or being a partner and developing? So, um, so, uh, so I mean, uh, I can't really help to to actually build a startup company, <laughs> but what we can do is uh, help you getting visibility for your company. So, once you have the company, what you might want to do is be visible on the partner network, uh, and so uh, is to propose your services. So, what you can do is actually register for it. So, here I'm I'm, I'm actually logged in, so I'm gonna just log out just to show you. But by the way, do you still see my old screen? Yes. Maxim, do you? Do, yes. We, okay. So uh, actually, on the partner network, everybody can register. Every device maker, every solution provider, everybody uh, will can register. So here, you just have to click on sign up, and you you actually say what you do, your name, etc. And after, of course, we review what you say and we'll check your content, etc. But if it's validated for from our people, uh, then you'll be able to to actually be vis visible on the on the partner network. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, if I take an example from one of contact we have is uh, the Société Nationale des Objets Connectés, the SNOC, um, which is a device uh, design house from France. You know, they made a really nice website uh, explanation about what they kind of service they do. You know, they do design, they do product development. You know, they have complete, you know, uh, skills in a lot of things. Uh, as a design house, you can even link your own product on it. So you can, you know, this is the, all the product they did with Sigfox. So, so they are the ones developing the Sigfox breakout uh, with GPS, etc. Uh, they work with, you know, you can see your partners. So uh, if you want to be visible, uh, the partner network can really, really help on that. Uh, and I would strongly advise, to be honest, to start a project on your own to try Sigfox. Uh, and so you can actually know better when the customer comes from. When a customer comes to do Sigfox, uh, you, you will know how to, 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 to be used for it. What we usually require to highlight you is to actually having work at least on one real customer project. Okay, questions are adding up. Um, so we try to answer them all. Uh, the next one is about certifications. Uh, to be able to sell Sigfox yeah. ready devices, what certification does my device need to go through? And this is someone talking uh, about uh, TI chip, which seems to be Sigfox compatible. Ah. Yeah, um, so uh, this is a really good question. So if uh, I would need a lot of time to answer that. Uh, the, so uh, I didn't really talk about certification here, but just you have to understand that um, there is two kinds of certification at Sigfox. Uh, there are two different ones. Um, the easiest one, let's say, is uh, the one for, device, so for devices, because of course, as we are a network provider, every single device has to go through a power emission test just to be sure that your device is really well made, if the antenna is well placed, etc. So every device has to go through this, what we call Sigfox Ready certification to you know, uh, look at your power emission. Uh, but then for soft, for soft kind of semiconductor, like Texas Instrument, TI, like ST as well, uh, you also need to, to actually go through another certification called the Sigfox Verified. Because here uh, on TI, you will have to implement the Sigfox stack by yourself uh, and you know, uh, implement the whole modulation, etc. cetera. Um, so you have to go through the certification, the Sigfox Verified by yourself. And I actually strongly you know, advise you to go on, on build.sigfox.com. Again, I'm sorry uh, to send you there <laughs> all the time. But if you go on certification, you will actually see the two different ones, as I said, you know. So the Sigfox verified uh, and explain you what it does, etc., uh, and uh, it will actually explain you the whole thing. And for TI, it will actually be the Sigfox verified certification to 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 actually implement the whole Sigfox stack by yourself. And once it's in, it's done, 
you will have to go to the Sigfox Redis application just to try and see if your device emits correct. Okay. But you need to first do the Sigfox verified with TI. For, for, people like, uh, so for people using modules like Wisel or Inocom or whatsoever, uh, the verified application is already done by the module maker. So by Wisel or Inocom, uh, they are already done that. So this is a customer of Wisel. They only need to go through the Redis application. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it depends on the semiconductor you're using. And TI is one in the one that you need to go for the verified by yourself. Uh, again, if you you know just send me an email to my to my email address, and I can maybe explain you a bit better about that uh, for sure. All right. The next one is about how Sigfox network performs for indoor devices. Are there some constraints? Uh, yeah. Uh, my my answer I'm I'm, I'm doing every time is uh, uh, you know radio is not magic. So of course uh, you will have limitation with with walls. I mean, but again, it's not uh, walls are not the end of radio. I mean, you will lose some power, but it will still go through. The only thing you need to be careful about is your, of course, device performance and the environment you will put it. Because of course, if you put it near more near the window, it will be better, etc. So uh, everything is a question about you know uh, the, um, the device performance and where you place it. If you place it inside a metal cage inside a concrete wall inside something of course the you know you will actually lose a lot of power but uh, what you have to look for is the you know the budget link of your, of your solution which is really really important um, so again uh, it's not an easy uh, it's not a, let's say a, a perfect answer but just to answer quickly uh, you know indoor Sigfox works really really well of course no problem I mean a lot of our use case and today our main use case is for is indoor the security alarms for houses uh, but then again, it's not magic. So you, you have to be sure that in, in your um, in your sorry in your design you have a really good antenna. Uh, you have to you are in a covered area, etc. So this is not magic. And if you you know we actually we are deploying more and more solutions to actually help with that as well. We just released a Sigfox repeater to help with really really com complex com sorry um, complex applications. So if you are minus one, minus two, minus three, uh, we actually deployed a repeater which will help uh, to have coverage in, in spots where should, you shouldn't have coverage. Uh, you know, you can actually place mini base station as well. So uh, it's, you know, there is also a solution if you can't get public coverage to, to still have coverage. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, so indoor it works, just to be careful with to some, uh, to some um, special, uh, special things. Okay, the next one is about any word on the possibility to combine your IoT devices or solutions with blockchain. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, you could actually, uh, but I'm uh, far from being an expert uh, on this topic, so I'm sorry. I will have to, 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 let's say, not answer the question correctly, so I prefer not to answer that. Uh, but from what I know from the blockchain, yes, you could for sure. Today, it's not done yet, uh, but I know, in, in especially in logistics, a lot of people are looking at it because of, of transfer, you know, uh, ownership transfer. Uh, so you know, if if, uh, if the device arrives at some point, you might want to transfer ownership to somebody else, and the blockchain can help in this way. So IoT plus blockchain is something that we are looking for really, really closely, and it can ap be applied very, very quickly in in uh, in, uh, in some use case. So especially logistics. So yes, blockchain can be used, but I'm far from being an expert, so I prefer not to answer too uh, deeply because I might say crap. So <laughs> I prefer being careful about. It. I prefer being careful. Being careful. Okay, a question from the same person, Tyler. Uh, does Sigfox yeah. platform do analytics as well, like data treatment, statistics, etc.? No, no, no. Um, again, you know, we are a network provider. So our service is providing you the antennas, etc. Uh, and, you know, and we need a platform to give you the data. But this platform is not made to visualize the data. It's not made to do analytics. It's not made to do machine learning whatsoever. So that's why you need to connect your own platform on ours and get the data out. As we are a network provider, we of course keep the data for what, I think it's one year on our backend. But really, I mean, uh, don't use our platform to visualize the data. Just take everything on yours, visualize it on yours, and uh, this is the way it's supposed to be. Our, our backend is not really made for visualization at all. Okay, a question from Simant. Uh, what are the different connectivity options between Sigfox and my own specific platform? 
so two of them, uh, the API. So again, you know, as a regular API, you, do, you can actually re request from the backend uh, the, the message that you get. Um, so it's very simple. It's any like any other APIs. And, and then we have the callbacks, which are very interesting because they will push the data to your server as soon as they come on our backend. So, you know, they will, it's kind of a webhook, if you know what I'm talking about. It's very, very simple to implement. And so it will be pushed to your own server. So, I mean, most of our customers implement both, both the API and the callback, but for different kind of use case. Callback is for, you know, something having, some, having the, all the data instantly. So our backend will push it to yours. And the API is to check, uh, is to, to get data by batch, or it may be to, to recover some things, to get more data. Uh, so yeah, the API and the callbacks are used in different ways, uh, but you have to do it, you have to use both. Okay, the next one is where can I buy the Sigfox repeater? So, uh, so the Sigfox repeater is a product from Adonis, uh, a company uh, based in France. And so they are the ones to distribute it and sell it, etc. So I will actually advise you to go on the Adonis uh, website uh, and, uh, and try and, uh, and, uh, and find it. Uh, so I, 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 like what I can do is actually send you the link for the product page. Uh, they will just show you. Um, you have a, you have a special link for that uh, here. It's a, it's a form to contact Adonis. So it's it's here. I, I will I can actually send you the link for that. Uh, I don't know who you are, but Maxim will tell you. Will tell me. And the last one, uh, Wauta from uh, Cote d'Ivoire says that he doesn't have coverage. So how can we enable this? Uh, again, you can use a dongle. Uh, the FDR dongle is very, very useful. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. So if you don't have coverage, uh, then you, you can get this uh, small you know, USB stick, uh, plug it to your laptop, and it will actually act like a Sigfox network. So if you want to try uh, stuff, you want to you know, try and develop stuff, uh, you can go through, through the dongle. But unfortunately, as you know, uh, as long as we don't have an, let's say, an official operator in in your country, you won't be able to, you know, you know, try in the wild, etc. Uh, because, uh, you know, we don't actually sell base stations for you to install in your country. Uh, we, you know, it has to be through, an, let's say, an official operator. So, uh, unfortunately, as of now, you only have the option of the FDR dongle. I see. I see, Wata, you raise your hands. Uh, so um, I, I open your mic if you have any more to add on this. Uh, did, did we answer your question? Doesn't work. And maybe a run. Huh? Yes, one. your uh, mic is on. You were raising your hand. Do you have any question? Have we answered your question, Juan? Okay. Juan, if you have any any question, uh, the the mic is open. No oh, thanks. Okay. Um, anyone else who has a question? We're we're gonna close the the webinar very soon. Uh, don't hesitate to raise your hand, and uh, I will open your mic, and you can uh, you can directly ask uh, to Anthony. Yes, Alaeldin, you, you're, you're on. Hello. Hello? Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, ah, yeah. So, just I wanted to ask about uh, the start uh, app program. Uh, and uh, the yeah. thing is that I do not know how can I uh, pick up a customer. So, um, as I told, uh, I have the idea, but I didn't start yet. And then uh, I uh, I sent Sigfox before, and they told me, um, yeah, you you have to find the customer. But I I don't know how to find the customer in your network. And uh, I think also Sigfox Sigfox has a specific policy to help startups to 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 develop their idea and then to be a partner. So, am I right or no? So, so uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right in the way that we have a program. I think you, uh, if you register to it, you've seen to onboard new startup and to help them to start with Sigfox. So we'll provide you, you know, uh, the tools, the tools, the learning tools, the academy, etc. 
to help you find the good content at the good timing uh, and to develop your ideas. Uh, but then uh, to find customers is another thing. I mean, uh, the, the program uh, can't really help you with that as, as long as you don't have a product. So uh, it, once you have something developed, you can you know apply for the partner network and we will display your product there for no problem. So people will see it and get in contact with you and then get in touch. Uh, but as long as you don't have something, uh, for, for me, it's, it's you know we can't really help with that. Um, so. So yeah, if you, if you want to just, uh, if you're like a design house and, you know, the, let's say, propose your services, you can go on the partner network as well and just describe what kind of services you can propose. Uh, and, you know, people will be able to contact you as well from there. But the startup program don't bring you customers. Let's put it that way. Startup program helps you to understand Sigfox, helps you to go on and, and get support uh, with your product, but don't help to get customers directly from the program. Okay, but start program uh, applies only for startup. So this means that I have to publish my company, not uh, not like that, uh, without publishing. No, I mean uh, it, you don't have to be a startup to apply because uh, you know everybody can apply. Just uh, you will get uh, automated like your accounts on our programs, etc. If, if if you plan to build it in the next couple of months, you can still apply. That's not a problem. Uh, we're not going to check if you have like a website, etc. Uh, don't don't worry for that. So you can still apply to our program, no worries. Uh, but yeah, and then you will actually get everything uh, as as if you are a real company. So don't don't worry. If your problem is that you don't have your company set up yet, you can still apply, and you will get the same thing as you already had the company. Yes. So I I am already applied and I registered myself, and I have like some some links for uh, your social network. Um, like yeah. two links, number, uh, but but uh, so that's all for these two networks, or is there anything else? I mean, no, no, there is something else. So we, there might be some problems with the with the submission. So maybe you can actually send me an email, and I'll try to look uh, what was uh, the problem, because yeah, there might be an issue in the automation program. Uh, so so yeah, send me an email, and we'll take that uh, offline, no problem. Okay, so can you please just uh, send us your email or? Yeah, 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 Maxim. So I, I can't really, yes. okay. I can't write. I'm not the uh, admin, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Maxim will actually send. It. We see the names and we will uh, get in touch with you. No worries. Um, there's there's another question from Cement. I will give you. Okay, I open your mic, Cement. Um, yeah, I got that. Thanks. Uh, so the question is, uh, do we have support for push and pull? Uh, both options, uh, that is uh, either we want to pull the data from a device or when the data wants to push, a, uh, sorry, the device wants to push the data uh, onto the server. Uh, so we are talking so, about uh, so, uh, API and yeah. backend, the push and pull data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can, uh, so, but, um, so yes, you can pull data from our backend with the API for sure. So let's say, for example, you want to pull let the hundred last message of your devices. You can. There is an API call for that. Uh, but then uh, you can't really push data on our server. Uh, on the API allows you to register new devices on our backend. Uh, allows you to create new groups, new device type, a lot of new stuff. But you can't really push data on our backend. Uh, the API is really made to for you to get data out of our platform. Uh, what you can do is actually send data to your own, own device. Uh, but this is really specific. It's called what uh, the downlink. You know, it's if you want to send data to your device, uh, it's uh, it's uh, you know, so it's, it's very particular. So um, it's I, I don't really understand what you wanted to do with, with that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, I think I got my answer. Okay. okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm going to open the mic from Wauta. No, it doesn't work with you. I don't. I think you have a mic issue, Wauta. You can't raise your question, but you, you're asking how can I use my Arduino Sigfox board uh, because you're talking about a company. Yeah, of, uh, yeah, of course. I, I, I have a, an Arduino board, but I don't know exactly how to use it. Okay. Uh, so um, the good thing with Arduino, uh, it's it's uh, Arduino is an amazing company because 
they actually provide a lot of documentation with it. So if you don't know how to use your Arduino board, uh, yeah. you can go on their website. So I'm going to try that uh, on, on Arduino.cc. Uh, if you go on the MakerFox website, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is it? The MakerFox, I think it's the first product. Hello? Where is it? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm, uh, okay, I'm okay, on okay. the website. Uh, yeah, the, the website of Arduino. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I'm just trying to find the maker fox, and uh, because you will actually be able to find yeah. a lot of documentation, and you will be able to copy paste. Okay, 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 no problems. Yeah, yeah, so John, I'm, I'm, I'm clear. yeah, yeah. So, so uh, they provide with the Arduino. They provide um, yeah. the Arduino IDE, so the software yeah. package, and then you will be able to to actually copy paste uh, an example, what they call a sketch. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you don't even have a code to do. They have example, you just click, it will compile, send the code to your board, and it will directly send to the Sigfox network. So really, it's, it's really, really, really simple. So you have a, as I said, you have a get started section, and you even yeah. have a special Sigfox library reference. So it will tell yeah, you how to go. To put it uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so you have to buy the, you have to download the Arduino IDE, etc. But it's really, to be honest, I'm, I'm the, yeah. one of the worst developer <laughs> on earth, yeah. and even myself, I, I could I could uh, really easily uh, send uh, Sigfox messages uh, with the Arduino board. So it's very simple. Okay, so but, but if I have this board, uh, I need the dongle too. So if you yeah, if necessary? you are on a co in a country, if yeah, you are in a country no where we don't have public network. Yeah, you need yeah. A, yes, you, so yes, you need you, uh, the USB dongle. Oh. Because, uh, board, board. you need something to receive the message. Sorry? Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. If there's no more question, I think we are going to close the webinar. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. And uh, we hope to see yeah. you soon on the next sessions. Uh, we are going to have a webinar every two weeks, almost every two weeks. You have the full schedule on our website. So please uh, keep reading our newsletter, keep coming to our webinars, and uh, we hope that we can raise uh, your developing skills over time, uh, as well as your business skills, so that uh, you develop the best performing IoT solutions. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah and uh, thanks, Maxime. And before to close, if you're interested to ask more questions to the community, etc., uh, feel free to join us on Slack. Uh, the community is open to everybody. So uh, uh, we won't be able to answer every single question, uh, of course. But if you just want to join and say hi and, and talk to other developers with Sigfox, etc., uh, come with us on Slack. Uh, uh, and and uh, it's really, really nice. So you'll be able to get uh, all the uh, developers and then get technical content from them. So uh, it's open to everybody. So just join us and we'll be there. And thanks, everybody.